I will recommend we go ahead and jump into the introductions. So I will start very fast. Hi, everybody. Linton Meyer is a blackboard. Um, I am here mostly to make sure things work. <laughs> so I'm going to hand it over to Joshua, who's going to lead the session. Um, but if there are any problems we begin, um, again, please let me know and I'll jump into troubleshoot where I can. Otherwise, Joshua will hand it over to you to do intro and you can take it from here. Great. Awesome. Are you able to see my screen? I am, but if someone else on the participant side can chat in to say that they can see it as well, that would be appreciated. I know we've had issues in the past with not everybody being able to see the screen. So this is a good test. If someone can type into chat that yes, they can see the screen, um, that will make sure that we know. I see thumbs up, so you're good. To okay. Go, All Perfect. Right. Yeah, it's always good to check that. But uh, yeah, anyways, welcome everyone. My name is Joshua. Uh, I'm a software engineer uh, here at Red Arc. Um, if you don't know uh, Red Arc, we essentially build um, a wide variety of applications that kind of extend the, the Razor's Edge um, core offerings. So we build apps such as Letterbox. Um, which allows people to, to send customized letters to constituents and, and for gifts. Um, email Marketing Connector, which allows you to sync data between Razor's Edge and your email marketing platform. And Engagement Tile, um, which allows you to, to calculate engagement scores um, for your constituents. Um, but we were asked to do a presentation on Power Automate and working with um, nested endpoints and uh, Lots of other things in there, so I'm, I'm really happy to to jump into this and, and dive on this and, and demo some things. Um, I'm originally from Canada, Toronto. Um, previously, I was working at Amazon, but I moved to Australia, which is where Radiker is based out of back in February, because my wife is doing uh, medical school here. So I'm pretty new to the team, but so far it's been it's been a great experience, and I've loved working within the um, the Razor's Edge um, ecosystem. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, to shout out uh, um, Blackboard and Razor's Edge and um, the BP Dev Days organizers for giving me the opportunity to present and to speak. Uh, so let's dive in. Um, perfect. So what we'll be going through today is through some Power Automate skills, um, specifically um, working with the BlackBot API. Um, and through Power Automate, you can have full API access without having a ton of coding knowledge, which is awesome. Um, if you don't know what Power Automate is, Power Automate is essentially a um, automation platform um, that is built by Microsoft that allows you to you know, perform a variety of, of automation uh, flows and steps and tools um without having to to you know code specifically so it's a very low code no code kind of tool um so allows you to really kind of solve business challenges without ever having to to really type type the code <laughs> um so we'll try to keep it pretty simple um and kind of break it down um really easily for you um there are some resources that we have shared that I'll talk about at the end um and I think for this one, I would recommend just listening to the skills I go through rather than trying to recreate everything I'm doing yourself, um, because then you could use our, our resources we provide after to import, you know, some flows in, into your Power Automate and rewatch the recording um, session later. So just sit back, relax and uh, take some notes. Um, so we're going to go through three kind of core skills and demos. Um, the first is working with lists. I know that lists can be kind of tricky to work with sometimes, especially if they're nested lists. You got um, list of constituents, list of addresses, um, lots of things like that. So we're going to go through four kind of um, ways to work with it. So sorting, list, filtering list, composing, um, and union. Um, secondly, we're going to do something which is calling a flow from another flow. So this is a way to build reusable components or reusable flows and not have to have these massive flows. So it it will, I think, help uh, break things up, uh, break up your flows and, and make things easier to work with. And thirdly, we're going to put it all together. So those kind of first two steps, and we're going to create a flow which will send a thank you email to a new constituent. Um, great. And if you see me look to the side, I have my um, 
demo notes uh, here that I'll, I'll reference. So I don't uh, miss anything important, uh, but let's uh, get started. Um, so I'm just gonna switch to the Power Automate tab. Um, let me just move the Zoom window out of the way. Okay, is everyone still able to see my screen here? Good, okay, awesome. So I have three kind of flows here. I ignore the first one, but I have three fl uh, main flows here, which is um, the final one, uh, send thank you to constituents. So that's gonna be, uh, sorry, that's gonna be this step here, the third one. So we'll look at this one last. And then the first two steps, uh, get organization contact details and get constituent contact deals details are going to be kind of two precursor flows that we're going to take a look at um, and then put it all together in this one. So the first thing we want to look at is lists. So let's look at get constituent contact details, this flow. All right, here we go. Perfect. Okay, so I'll walk through it and then I'll, I'll explain the steps in more detail. So first we'll, we'll manually trigger the flow. This is a sample input here that you can have. Um, and then we have three um, uh, steps where we get uh, information from Razor's Edge um, API. So first we're getting a constituent, then we're getting a constituent name format summary, and then we're getting a list of constituent addresses. Um, and so all of these, the input is the constituent ID, which we can <clears throat> put in here when we manually trigger it. And this is just an extra step here. Um, so that's that. And then now this is the filter uh, step that we want to look at. And this is um, what I would call um, a compose step. So we don't want to return all of the data we get from all of these endpoints. Instead, we only want to return something really specific. And so that's what this is doing here. So we're going to return specifically the name, the salutation, the email, and the last address added. Um, so let me go to a uh, previous uh, flow history I did here just to show you what that actually looks like. Um, before I go into that last step. So I had a run that succeeded here. Okay, so here's the get constituent. So we have all the information here. Um, the name format summaries, all the, all the information here, the constituent addresses, um, lots of information here. Um, and then that would be a lot of information to return and have to work with. And so this allows us to only output the specific information that we want to do. So here we've, you know, in the input, we've chosen name, citation, email, and the last address added. And then that's exactly what is output here. And so that way we can choose what uh, uh, information is output and just makes it a little bit easier to, to work with. Um, so let's go back and to figure out how we actually got this last address added. Um, okay. Okay, perfect. So this is kind of a custom function step. Um, and so it can get a little confusing. So I'm just gonna open it up here. Um, gotta move my zoom window over here. Um, okay, so it's kind of hidden away in here. So I'm just gonna copy this and um, open it into a notepad. Are you able to see the notepad I have on my screen or is that hidden? I'm not seeing it. Okay, let me reshare my screen here. Uh, I'll reshare my entire screen. Are you able to see it now? Yep. Okay, so the constituent addresses that we get from here. So output list constituent addresses can often have multiple um, outputs. And so we only want to actually pick the last address added. So how do we do that? Well, that's what working with the list is. So let me break it down for you. So the first thing is this, we're getting the output here. Um, list constituent addresses, um, which we're getting from this step here. And then we're getting the output, the value of that. The first thing we wanna do is you wanna sort it, okay? So that's the first step here. 
sort. I'm going to get to it by the sort command here, and we're going to sort it by the date added. Okay, so uh, the first parameter is the, the actual value, the list we want to sort, um, and then the second parameter is the date added. So that's that. Now, the next step we want to do is we want to reverse it. You can see here. So first we'll sort it by the date added, then we're going to reverse it. So then I'll be going in opposite order. And then thirdly, we're going to get the first one because there could be, could be one in there, there could be 10 in there. Uh, we don't know, but we want the first one. So then we get the first one. And then that'll end up getting us the last address um, added here. So sort it, reverse it, and first. Um, I find kind of working with just looking at this in the in here can be kind of confusing. And it'll, you know, if you try to uh, write this function, you'll, you'll probably end up making a mistake. So I find it's easier to kind of open it up in just like uh, your Apple Notes or something equivalent, and then just writing out the, the, the points right here. And that'll be a lot easier to kind of reason with and work with. Okay, awesome. So that's that there. Um, and that is uh, getting a constituent contact details. So now let's look at one of our other core flows, which is get organization contact details. Okay, and edit. Okay, perfect. So this one again will manually trigger and, and uh, the two inputs here are um, the constituent ID um, and then the contact type. So we're looking for the specific contact type in the organization. Um, next, we're gonna list all the constituent relationships. So this is gonna be an API call to Razor's Edge. We're gonna pass in the constituent ID, which we get from here. Um, there's some other information here, but we don't need it for now. And then now we have another filter step. So this is filtering the list here. Um, so what we want is we're gonna take the value from here so the list of constituent relationships, and we're going to filter it to only have ones whose contact type, which is one of the fields returned from Razor's Edge, equal to the contact type I specify here, which is by default coordinator. Um, and so that way, if you have 10 uh, <clears throat> constituent relationships, but only one of them has a contact type, only one will be outputted from this step. And then we're gonna check if there's a match. Um, and when we do that by checking the length of it. So let me open this one up here. This one's a little bit more simple than the, uh, the last one. So we're getting the value from filter to matching contact types, which is this, and then we're just getting the length of it. And so if the length is greater than one, um, then we go to this step. And if not, then we don't do anything. Um, so let me show you uh, what this looks like when we actually run it, and then I'll move on to the, the rest of it here. Okay, I uh, gotta go to previous runs. Okay, perfect. So you can see in our list of constituent relationships, we have a lot of information here. Now I know it could be kind of difficult to see it in here. So I'm just gonna copy this and I use what's called a JSON formatter. Um, JSON stands for JavaScript object notation, um, essentially a, a way to, to format data. Um, but when I put it in here, it kind of formats it for you and it makes it a lot easier to kind of work with then and then in here. But we can see that um, when we list the constituent relationships for this constituent from Razor's Edge, we get back three values. Okay, so value one, uh, two, and three. It's a list of three values. And what we want to do is we want to filter because we only want values whose contact type is equal to coordinator. So we can look at this one. This has contact type of, uh, where's the contact type? There we go, coordinator. So that one will be the one returned. And then this one has contact type of, um, where is it? I might not even have it set even here. Okay, so then we're obviously not picking that one. And yeah, not picking this one either. So this will be the one that we um, pick and that'll be the one that's returned. And then these ones are all filtered out because we don't uh, want them. Okay, perfect. Now let me go back to um, editing this because I want to show you another cool kind of core concept. Um, 
So that's essentially working with lifts, sorting, filtering, composing, union. Now I want to move into talking about calling a flow from another flow, which I, if I believe is a newer feature, um, and it is a premium feature, so you do need a premium version of, of Power Automate. Um, but this is really neat. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to, instead of building really long flows with lots of different steps, it allows you to build really smaller bite-sized flows and then use those flows within other flows. So for example, after we get the matching contact types here, like I just showed you, and then we do a check here to see if there's at least one value, then if it's yes, we're what's called running a child flow, which means we will be calling this flow, get constituent contact details, the first flow I showed you, and passing in the information here. So instead of having to add this entire flows logic, also within this entire flow, we can keep it self-contained in its own flow, get constituent contact details, and then use that within here, and then get the output here. Um, so this is called calling a flow from another flow. And we can see here what we do is we pass in um, the first value here. So the um, organization contact details, and then we'll also get the constituent contact details. Um, and I could obviously don't have to pick this flow, I could pick the other flows, but this is the appropriate one to, to pick. Um, so let me go back to the actual run and I could show you what it actually looks like when you run it. Um, there we go. Um, okay, check if there's more than one match. Yes, there is. And then we're gonna call, here we go, calling our constituent contact flow, passing in this ID, which is one of the ones we got back from uh, here. Um, and perfect, this is what it gives us, our contact details for this specific constituent. Um, so I definitely recommend that if you're using, um, uh, if you have really long flows and you're often find you're repeating the same steps, um, I would definitely recommend breaking them into smaller bite-sized chunks and then using those throughout many of the flows because you could you reuse a lot of uh, um, components and, and it'll make your life a lot more uh, simple, then you could share them with your teammates as well. And then you could see that we kind of define that we want to use this flow and another flow by this final step here, respond to a power app um, or flow. Um, and so that's the the step we want to add to, to really define that there. Um, perfect. Okay. Um, now, so that's the first two steps here, working with lists, calling a flow from another flow, and now let's put it all together. Um, and if you have any questions, um, we'll, we'll go through them at the, the end as well. Okay, so putting it all together is we wanna send a thank you to new constituents. So let's open this flow here. Okay, um, wait for it to load. Okay, perfect. So let's dive into the steps. The first is we'll, we'll manually trigger it. The second is we're going to get a list of recipients that we want to send a thank you email to. So we have a list set up here called organizational lists. And these are all the, the lists in our, in our Razor's Edge environment. So you could all obviously make your own list. Um, and then we'll go to this step here, send thank you for each. Um, so we're going to do this for each uh, uh, constituent in this list. And I think, believe this list only has two. So it's pretty simple to see, but you could have many more than, um, than that. Um, okay. So the first thing is we're going to look at the condition here and we're going to see what is the type of the constituent that we get. Is it an organization? And if it's an organization, then we are going to call a child flow like we just showed you. And we're going to get the organization contact details, obviously. And if it's not an organization, so no, then we are going to get the constituent contact details. Um, so obviously this makes uh, a lot of sense. We wanna get the specific contact details depending on the type. We can't use the exact same logic um, because the, the list could have organizations, it could have constituents. And if we try to use the same logic, it'll be wrong for one of them. So that way, that's why we need to add this condition here and then call in these child flows. And this is where you could really see the child flows um, really in their full power because otherwise we would need to add all all the logic in here and all the logic in here into this flow. And then it gets a lot more confusing to, to show you guys. Um, but this way it's a lot more kind of bite-sized and, and easier to see. Okay, awesome. So we've gotten the, the contact details from the organization and we've gotten the contact details from the constituent. And then now 
we're going to do a combination. So we're going to combine these details um, into this. And we just looked at uh, uh, this kind of um, uh, a step previously. Um, but it's essentially defining what kind of data you want to uh, return. Um, and so we want to return the primary contact details along with the information in this um, custom function here, which will um, depend on whether it's either an organization contact details or a constituent contact details. And for the second last step, what we want to do is we're going to define the schema of the output. Um, and so what this is doing is it's defining essentially um, all the, 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 the type of this and all the properties and all the sub, sub properties. Um, and this allows us to really um, have a lot of in-depth knowledge about what um, exactly is going to be within this output object and then what kind of um, information and data we could assume that's there. Um, so it makes us so that we don't have to guess that, oh, we hope that they have, you know, the name property there and it's a string. We know for sure that there'll, you know, there'll be a name and there'll be, there'll be a string here. Um, and then finally, we'll actually send the thank you email. So we're gonna send it to myself um, and then we'll include the salutation, which we get from here. So let's find the salutation. There we go, salutation. Um, address, state, postal code, and then a quick, quick thank you, and then that sends it off. So let me walk through an actual run of it, and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense um, when you're able to to see the run. Uh, okay, previous runs. Now the run fails at the last step, which is sending the email because I don't have um, the authentication for the email provided properly, but you can see the the, the rest of the flow. Okay, so you got the list of constituents. So take a look at this into our formatter. Um, so you can see we have a list of two of them. Two. Um, the first one is, uh, let's see, I believe this is a constituent. Oh, no, it's an organization. There we go. And then the second is a type individual. Okay, so I got organization, we got individual. Perfect. Um, okay, and then we'll go into this step, which we'll do it for each one. Okay, so the first one, the condition, we could see for the first one here, which was the organization, um, the the expression, um, which is going to check if it's an organization, evaluates the true, which means it's going to get the organization contact details through this step here, which it did successfully. So here we go. We got the organization contact details. And then the second one um, evaluates to um, no, because it's an individual. So it'll get the individual contact details here, like that. OK. Um, and then the next one is we're going to combine them. So let's see here. So this is the input we, we put in here. Um, and then this is the output we get out. So we have the primary contact details and then all the information like name, citation, email, last address added and, and all things like that. And that's what we, we need to, to actually send the email. Um, and then this is gonna be um, making sure that the schemas are being applied to it um, like that. So reformatting things um, and ensuring that it, it fits into um, this definition here. So having the, the type and having uh, uh, these properties like name and citation. And then finally, we're gonna actually send the, the email. And so you can see for this first one here, we have the subject, thank you for signing up. And then we have all the information here. So dear Miss Fawn, um, we have their address that we got from Razor's Edge. We have the thank you notes and everything like that. Um, so obviously it, it did send because of the unauthorized error, but um, you could see how that would <coughs> work. And if we look at the next one, like this, um, then we got the same thing. So we got the um, step here to combine all the details, um, apply the schema to it, and then actually send it with the information. So you can see the different information here. And that's pretty much uh, it. So being able to send that thank you and then using these two flows within it. Um, 
So to quickly review, we looked at working with lists. We looked at sorting, filtering, composing, and union. Um, we looked at calling a flow from another flow and how to split up your flows. And then we put it all together to send a thank you email. Um, before I wrap up, I just wanted to shout out the Red Arc Drop Bear Scavenger Hunt. I would definitely recommend going and do it because there's a pretty cool prize, which is um, Letterbox and our survival kit. And the fact we have here is uh, fact number 12, which is using words like crikey, g'day mate, and bonza may also help keep them in their trees in case you don't have any Vegemite handy. Um, if you want to hear more about Red Arc and Letterbox, which actually does allow you to send um, letters to constituents with custom detail from lists all within Razor's Edge, come talk to us at our, at our booth or check out our site as well. Um, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Is there any... Uh, questions in the last couple of minutes that we have. That's what I was going to ask, which is if you'd like, feel free to come off mute or toss them in chat. I know I did see one from Mark. If there's a last function that could be used instead of first reverse. I don't know if you know the answer to that, Joshua. What I will tell many of the folks on this is I have learned something every single time I've tried something in Power Automate and figured out a new way of doing it. So I promise you someone else has another way of doing something if you haven't yet come across it. Yeah, I I don't know for sure, Mark, but I would venture a guess that there is definitely uh, something like that. Or, or if it's not called last, it's going to be something called final or, or something like that. But I think the best way is just to, just to try it out and see what you get or uh, or uh, you can always check the, the documentation. Um, or actually now for, for some of my coding, I use ChatGPT to uh, see what it knows. And, and sometimes it's wrong, so you can't fully trust it, but often it provides a lot of context and can be easier than Googling as well. Is there a way to get a copy of the slides from your presentation? Uh, yep, I think they should be uploaded, but if not, if you wanna send your email, um, I can email them to you as well. Perfect. Yep. And all sessions, I can't promise this actually takes place because technology, but all <laughs> sessions should be available post the conference, both slides and recordings. Um, so the recording of this will be available for something you want to go back and watch. Yeah. Um, and there is uh, these this flow that we did, uh, or the three flows that we did, look at. These are um, uploaded in the session uh, resources. You want to use the second one because the first one's kind of the, the older version. So the second one's the, the accurate version. I uploaded two by accident. Um, and if you have any issues importing them into your Power Automate, just let me know um, and I could try to help you out. Well, and, and Josh, if you need help spelling organization, let me know. Oh, did I spell it? Oh, <laughs> you know, this might be the Australian spelling. <laughs> it is. That was my point. Yes. <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for the time today. If you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, again, I'm going to end this call now so that I can grab the recording and push it back out to folks who want to see it. Um, but thanks for the time, Joshua, and thanks for everybody who attended. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, all.